Up to now, in this course, we've concentrated on quantum computation and related ideas such as teleportation. We've introduced bits and pieces of quantum mechanics along the way, but haven't really thought systematically about what quantum mechanics really is as a physical theory. Over the next few videos, I want to explain what exactly quantum mechanics is. And uh, sort of the, the very short uh, story is that quantum mechanics is a set of four uh, mathematical uh, postulates. That, that's all uh, uh, the theory of quantum mechanics actually is. And uh, I'm going to give you the very high level picture of what those four postulates say. So the first postulate gives you a way of describing states, quantum states and state spaces. Uh, the second postulate tells you how in quantum systems uh, you should describe ooh, that's, uh, dynamics, so the way quantum systems uh, change and the way quantum states change. The third postulate tells you how to describe what happens when you observe or measure a quantum system. And uh, the fourth uh, postulate uh, tells you uh, what happens when you put uh, composite systems uh, together. So, so you put multiple quantum systems together to form a, a composite system uh, and in particular it specifies uh, how the states of the uh, composite system are related to the states of the individual uh, systems. And all of these postulates are parallel ideas of course that we've already seen in quantum computing um, and should really be very easy to understand. They're just natural generalizations of things that we've already seen in the context of quantum computation. And so in this video, we're going to concentrate on the first postulate uh, in particular, uh, which is about states and state spaces. And in uh, videos to come, uh, we'll describe or discuss uh, the other uh, three postulates as well. And at the end, once we've done that, uh, we'll pause briefly uh, to take in sort of the, the grand vista of quantum mechanics, the, the complete physical uh, theory. Okay, so what does postulate number one uh, say? It's about uh, quantum states and uh, uh, state spaces. Uh, I'm going to write this out explicitly um, uh, on uh, screen uh, just so you can see uh, all the different elements. So what it says, it says that associated to any physical system whatsoever, so it doesn't matter, you know, it can be an atom, a photon, um, it could be you know, a, a cell, it could be a, a mountain, it could be the universe as a whole. Um, so associated to any physical system is a complex vector space. You probably guessed that was coming. Known as the state space of the system. Um, and of course, that's you know, where uh, the quantum mechanics of the system takes place, the state space of uh, the system. And if the system is closed, so it's not interacting with the rest of the world, um, then we can describe it. In fact, we can describe the system uh, completely. by its state vector, as you can perhaps uh, guess. So this is the most complete possible uh, description of uh, the quantum system. It is described completely by its state vector. And as we've seen before, uh, which is, you know, it's a unit vector. So a vector of length one. Um, in the state space. And uh, yeah, there's not really very much new that's in this uh, postulate. Uh, you know, I've written it out at length so you can see all the elements, but most of the elements we've met before. Um, and you know, in particular, you know, obviously uh, qubits are an example of uh, this postulate, you know, where we have a two-dimensional uh, state space uh, and uh, uh, many qubit uh, systems 
um, are also an example of uh, this postulate. So instead of having a two-dimensional uh, you know, complex vector space as their state space, they might, in the case of two qubits, have a four-dimensional uh, complex vector space as their state space, um, and so on and so forth. Now, for any particular real you know, world physical system, an actual system in the lab, this postulate doesn't tell us, doesn't give us a recipe for figuring out uh, what the state space or the quantum state is. So, for example, um, let's imagine our system is an atom, and it doesn't tell us what the state space of the atom is. It just tells us that there is one, and there is a complex vector space which can be used, but it doesn't tell us you know, the details of that. And if you know, in particular, if you're thinking about the state vector, it doesn't tell you what the state vector is in any particular configuration uh, for uh, the atom. And it turns out that that isn't actually supplied, that information isn't supplied by the rules of quantum mechanics. It has to be supplied through some extra rules. So in the case of atoms uh, and photons, um, for example, um, you know, the basic rules are supplied by the theory of quantum electrodynamics, also known as QED, um, you know, provided you stay out of the nucleus. But if you're just trying to understand uh, the way you know, the nucleus as a whole interacts with the electrons and the way uh, you know, the uh, atoms uh, uh, interact with photons, um, you can use QED. And so in some sense, what we have is the theory of quantum mechanics, but if you want to describe atoms and photons, you need to add quantum electrodynamics on, and you get a complete package that way using you know, the rules, the, post the four postulates of quantum mechanics, uh, plus the extra rules of QED, you get a complete description of atoms and photons. And what the rules of QED tell you is the answers to questions like, well, what is the state space uh, of a photon or an atom? What is the state's, uh, what is the, you know, the, the quantum state in a particular case? Uh, it, it lays all that out. So in some sense, quantum mechanics is really a framework for the development of you know, complete physical theories. And in, in particular you know, circumstances, you need to add in some extra rules to tell you what the states are, to tell you what the state spaces are, and we'll see that this is a theme uh, also through the other postulates. If we want to understand the dynamics or measurement or whatnot, we need extra rules beyond the mathematical framework of, of quantum mechanics. Um, so, you know, it's very similar in some sense um, to the relationship between a language and its grammar. So the grammar is a basic framework um, for the language, but there's a whole bunch of details of the language, word definitions and so on, that need to be added on in order to completely specify the language. So this is just, you know, it's a framework, it's a, a sort of a basic uh, outline of the language. Um, and in the same way, um, if we have a computer's operating system, or OS, that sets up a basic framework for doing all kinds of input and output and controlling the screen and controlling you know, printers and, and whatnot, um, and, and keyboards. Um, but it, it, on its own, you know, it's not, it doesn't necessarily contain things like you know, the, the application software that you, that you use every day, things like um, uh, PowerPoint and you know, Excel and so on. Um, those have to be added on uh, extra. Um, you know, on top of the operating system to, to get those applications. So, you know, if we're trying to understand specific physical situations, we need to add some extra bits on top of uh, quantum mechanics to understand those, you know, what the particular physical systems, how they should be described. Um, for us, we're not going to need to worry very much about finding these extra rules. Um, we're just going to be working with qubits and things like that, where the rules are, are very simple. Um, uh, and we're just kind of, you know, state them by fiat. Um, it is interesting that much of 20th century physics and possibly much of 21st century physics will be about finding rules like QED that fill out the quantum mechanical framework and tell us how to describe particular uh, physical systems. Okay, let me go back uh, and look at postulate one again. Um, I want to just clarify a couple of elements. So we, I say here, yes, you know, that state space is a complex vector space. As being a bit more pedantic, I would say that actually it's a complex vector space with an inner product. 
Uh, and the reason I didn't say that, although many people do, and that's why I'm mentioning this, um, is because we just make use of the standard uh, in a product uh, on that space. Um, you know, when we think about it in terms of uh, column vectors and so on. Um, if you want to be really pedantic, um, people often use infinite dimensional vector spaces to describe uh, particular physical systems. And in that case, it's a complex vector space within a product and some additional technical uh, properties um, that people, when the, the vector space is endowed with them, uh, call it a Hilbert space. So you'll sometimes ha see people describe the you know, state space of quantum mechanics as a vector space, uh, sorry, as a Hilbert space. But don't, don't worry too much about that. Um, uh, if you're not familiar with Hilbert spaces, um, you know, it's perfectly fine to think of them as just complex vector spaces uh, with an inner product. Um, uh, you know, and, and that's good enough um, for us. In particular, in practice, if you actually want to describe real experimental uh, uh, systems, you know, it's usually um, quite sufficient um, to work with finite dimensional vector spaces. In fact, you can go a tremendously long way uh, working with just qubits. Uh, and in practice, you know, you know, that's what we use to do uh, quantum computing. So that's what we're going to focus on. And for those two-dimensional uh, uh, vector spaces, all the paraphernalia of Hilbert space and, and technical complications are just completely uh, unnecessary and, and we won't need uh, to use it. Uh, one final point, uh, again, as we discussed in an earlier video, there is this important distinction between uh, closed uh, and not closed uh, systems. So yeah, the first part of the postulate saying that yeah, we have a state space, this is true of any physical system, closed or not. Um, but the second part, to actually have a, a state vector, uh, is uh, only necessarily true in closed systems, that is systems which are isolated from the rest of the world. Now, in practice, um, we often can describe open systems in this way uh, as well. To understand why that's the case, you need a sophisticated understanding of, of you know, the description of, of, of uh, uh, open uh, quantum systems, but we'll just kind of take this for granted and, and, and work with it uh, uh, for now. Uh, it's not difficult, actually, later on uh, to understand uh, why that's uh, the case, uh, but it would take us a bit too far afield. Okay, that's uh, postulate one. We, we now know what we need to know about postulate one. Uh, in the next video, we're going to see uh, postulate uh, two uh, in the postulates of quantum mechanics. And that's all about how you describe the dynamics of a quantum uh, system.